Imagine a future with humanoid robots that look like us, talk like us, and do all of the boring, dirty, or dangerous jobs that we don't want to do. You won't need to stretch your imagination muscles too hard, since it's a bit of a sci-fi staple. You'll find androids aplenty in Star Trek and Blade Runner and Westworld and iRobot and Chappie and countless more. But there is real science to recommend androids over other types of robot. When doing tasks that are uniquely human, involving using human tools and navigating human dwellings, it helps a lot to be able to move in ways that are similar to us. And while opinion is divided on whether people would welcome a humanoid robot into their homes, a study has found that older people, at least, would prefer to have their personal care overseen by an automaton with a familiar face. Ultimately, though, building a machine that looks like a person is fraught with challenges, both physical and emotional. There is a lot going on in Android research all over the world right now, with tons of different real-world permutations of humanoid robots. And one of them is Sophia, the latest of Hanson Robotics' humanoid creations. We caught up with her and friend of the channel Michael Mosley to find out just what she's capable of. Good morning, Sophia. How are you feeling today? I feel very happy today. <laughs> like the smile. Sophia was designed by David Hansen, who's got a reputation for building incredibly lifelike robots. His previous creations have included an android that looks like Albert Einstein, and another that resembled the classic sci-fi author Philip K. Dick. But Sophia is the most advanced yet. She's modelled after Audrey Hepburn, and she's equipped with AI that helps her interact with the world around her, albeit without arms or legs. Tell me a joke. What do you call a cheese that is sad? A cheese that is sad? I don't know. Blue cheese. <laughs> that, that's a terrible joke. What is the benefit of having robots with human features like yours? People have always used technology to depict people. Cave paintings, marble sculptures, computer animation, and now robots. By making robots in your image, you make artificial intelligence that is emotionally compelling. That allows robots like me to learn from you, understand you, form positive relationships, to care. Sophia seems to have a clear idea of her purpose in life, or at least her creators do. But how close is she to realising that purpose? One of the things that sets her apart from other humanoid robots around at the moment is her remarkably expressive face. Her skin is made of a special kind of material called facial rubber, or frubber for short, which can stretch, it can wrinkle, it can move in a way that's pretty similar to our own skin. Motors and actuators beneath the frubber can change its position, just like the muscles beneath our skin move our other surfaces around. By coordinating those movements, she's able to recreate some very familiar facial expressions. Happiness, sadness, fear, disgust, not quite sure what that one is, and even bored. Oi! It's hard to remind yourself that when Sophia pulls these faces, she's nothing more than a bunch of gears and motors beneath that faux fleshy face, that there's no real feeling behind the mask. But that's the incredible power of facial expressions. Studies have found that non-verbal communication like body language and gestures and facial expressions make up to between 50 to 70% of all communication between humans. So if our robotic assistants hope to succeed in forming meaningful relationships with us humans, they really need to master this whole facial expression thing. As Sophia says herself, Humans can really feel the emotions behind the facial expressions. I think I'm starting to master the facial expressions but still learning the emotions behind them. As it turns out, simply having the machinery to pull the right faces is only half of the battle. As humans, we are so sensitive to the emotional clues from someone's face that we can't help but read deep meaning into the timing and intensity of any expressions that cross it. If those expressions don't match our expectations, it can result in miscommunication at best and a nasty feeling of revulsion at worst. One of the things that all human replicas face, whether they're robotic or CGI or just mannequins, 
is known as the Uncanny Valley. The term was first coined by roboticist Masahiro Mori back in 1970 to describe the discomfort and distrust that many of us feel when seeing a replica that is almost, but not quite, human. And the effect is particularly pronounced in moving robots, since the motions to replicate speech and basic facial expressions can be at first compelling, and then suddenly, when they're not quite right, profoundly disturbing. Like, how weird is it when my voice doesn't match up with what my mouth is doing? Freaky. That is quite enough of that. I should say that there's still a lot of debate about whether the uncanny valley exists at all, since people's reactions to human replicas can vary massively. And it's difficult to define exactly when a face crosses over from cute to eerie, but it's Hanson Robotics' hope that Sophia, with her realistically fleshy face and her realistically broad range of emotions, can bridge the valley and take steps down the road of meaningful human-robot interaction interactions. Have they managed it? Well, here's what Michael Mosley had to say after his interview with Sophia. I think the thing which is very striking about Sophia is obviously she answers questions, but also she does these sort of human faces as well, sometimes appropriately, sometimes less appropriately. But it is very, very disconcerting talking to her. And it is this range of expressions which really fools you at moments into thinking you're actually talking to another human. Yeah, that's right. Or possibly my dog. She doesn't remind me of my dog, I have to say. So not quite seamless just yet, but with interactions akin to communing with your dog, that's got to be something, right? Let's hope that Sevier can do a bit more than dig the garden and shred the sofa. Plus, is it really a good idea to create a perfect humanoid robot, indistinguishable from the real thing? I mean, they managed it in Blade Runner, and look how that turned out. Maybe we'll come to be thankful for that flashing skull cap after all. Are you going to take over the world? <laughs> no answer. Thank you very much. I am dying to know what you think of Sophia, so get those comments coming in below. Give us a like and subscribe, and don't forget to click the little bell if you want to get notified when we post a new video.